Well, I just drove away from seeing John and his dog Caesar. He didn't want to be on video, so um, I just I just took a few a few photographs and yeah, nice guy. He was telling me that his brother died um, last year. We talked about some old homeless people. Some he knew. Tony he knew. Tony Porter. Jim he knew, but Pat he couldn't remember. And he was rather angry that that street sweeper got too close to his dog. I mean, I wished I was recording a vi video. I didn't realise he was going to come right up. I, I had to move out of his way. And that's a big pavement. I don't know what that guy was, was, was doing. But it frightened Caesar, and Caesar didn't want any more photographs after that. But um, he's going to uh, give, the, give some of those clothes to, to Jimmy. Um, because Jimmy is usually in that place, but he's not there at the moment. Um, they tend to swap over, you know, w one guy will hold the fort, if you like. Um, because if they don't, then either the council comes along and confiscates, or, well, not confiscate, they actually chuck away their bedding in their possessions. And if the council aren't taking their stuff away, then uh, other homeless are uh, robbing them like John told me that his phone um, got lost now it's well known to me that uh, mobile phones when the homeless are sleeping they will get stolen either by other homeless um, which are then sold you know for, for money for, for, for drugs or swap for drugs um, or by members of the public that um, are often drunk, that come along, steal their possessions, kick them and punch them a few times. Uh, I, I've seen a girl with, um, a homeless girl with uh, a, a huge black eye, absolutely it's so dark, um, looked like she'd been punched by a man. Well, she actually told me she was, she told me she was in her tent and um, this guy came in and punched her in the face. Uh, whether that was a drug deal, I, I, I don't know, but um, I, I know that the girl was uh, under the influence um, pretty much every time I met her. And it's hard to speak like this because it sounds like I'm being derogatory to the homeless, but really it's um, just being honest. It's just telling you what what... I know what the homeless have told me, what I've seen with my own eyes, what I've experienced with the drug dealers walking up and down, um, laughing at me when I've witnessed to them. I, I don't look at the homeless through rose-tinted glasses anymore. Yes, I love them, I feel really sorry for them, but the answer is the gospel. It is not about plying them with money, plying them with uh, posh food. Um, the, the homeless are getting food that the working man uh, or woman it wouldn't dream of buying uh, the average person who are slogging their guts out nine to five and often longer hours than that. They wouldn't dream at the end of the day to go into Costa and get toasted paninis and fancy cakes and a latte with, with, with cream. And the abundance, the abundance of luxury food that the homeless get they are, they've actually told me that they are sick of sandwiches. And we're talking about Marks and Spencer's sandwiches. Because Marks and Spencer's are right next to where I've, I was just talking to John and his dog Caesar. And Costa are right there as well. So this is, this is not me speculating. This is me that I've seen with my own eyes. I've been witnessing and talking to the homeless and people have come along with 20 pound notes and handed it to the homeless uh, and and then 
you could be a few moments later someone had come along and say here you go love and it'd be it'd be a tray of costa stuff i, I mean just stuff to die for uh, and then sandwiches are coming along from marks and spencers and they'll say oh i'm sick of sandwiches Th these people are not hungry these people are not short of money they've got an abundance of both what they're starving for is the gospel and all these churches around doing soup runs I, I, I really wished that they would read their Bibles and realize that the homeless are in desperate need of living water. That, that's the only thing that's going to change them. Keep, keeping them fed on, on food that I haven't tasted in years because, well, I took, I took my daughter yesterday to, she wanted to go to Costa. It's a rare occasion. We went in there and I said, you can choose some food or you can choose a drink. You're not having both. And she chose a, a toasted cheese sandwich. It was a it was a few quid. So I wouldn't spoil my own child with what the homeless get. Not once, but but many times a day. That they get they get given so much Costa and MS food, not just sandwiches from MS, that they I've seen them feed their dogs with it. So don't be, don't be, uh, don't be fooled. I think don't be fooled is, is my advice. Uh, give them the gospel, but to, to keep them well fed and keep them full up with, with cash, where I've been told by homeless that they can make 200 pounds on a Friday night alone. And then they disappear for a few days because they've got enough alcohol and drugs that they've bought with that 200 quid and they don't need to be outside the station for example for a time this is what the homeless tell me it's not something that I think is going on it's something I've seen it's something I know don't forget, I've, I've talked to these people for years. I've got to know them. I've seen them drop dead over and over again. I've seen them reject the gospel over and over again. Please wake up, churches. You're doing them no favours by coming along with a, with a cup of tea. I've seen you. I've been sitting down with the homeless and you've thought I was homeless too. And you've said you were from Saint such and such church. And would you like a cup of tea? Here you go. Thank you very much. And you move on. Never once do you mention Jesus. Never once the gospel. Yes, in the Bible it says that if you give a cold cup of water to someone, you won't, you won't go unrewarded, something like that. But it says if you give a cold cup of water in Jesus' name, you never mention Jesus. When you offered me a cup of tea or gave a cup of tea to the, 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 the homeless guy that was sitting next to me. The gospel is not telling someone what church you're from. What a wasted opportunity. <laughs> it, it, I, I don't understand how someone can go for the, the effort of making huge jugs of hot tea this is what lovely thing to do really lovely thing to do because it can be bitterly cold out especially in the winter bitterly cold and a cup of tea is perfect for a homeless chap sitting on frozen concrete but you should have given the gospel i'd be ashamed of myself if i Gave a load of clothing donations today and well I don't feel smug, it's not it's not um my stuff, they're donations that I'm passing on. I don't feel any smugness. I feel sadness that when I give the gospel they 
don't embrace it. They don't embrace it. This uh, this frustrates me. As God is my witness, what I tell you is the truth and the whole truth. It's not speaking in hyperbole. It's not exaggerated. Uh, this is seven years experience of seeing the homeless uh, many years uh, on a daily basis sitting down uh, taking them to subway uh, eating and drinking with them this is not just a, a quick visit today like i had with john um, which was cut short because of that guy with the well, coming so close to us that I had to move out of the way and Caesar jumped out the way too. Um, anyway, let's go home. I've got to go to church now, get ready for church. Uh, always emotional, always emotional when I come to see the homeless. There's a rat over there, giant rat. It's too far away for me to film it, but a huge rat just came out of the, uh, the hedge. Uh, and we're only a few... <coughs> uh, I'd say I'm 400 yards maximum from where I was talking to John and Caesar. Uh, and it's a stretch of the imagination to, to think that the rats don't go where the homeless are sleeping, 400 yards away, where they've got stashes of very, very nice food, luxury food. Um, Okay, I've seen enough, said enough.